Now, this is the last of the historic plates. We have four historic bikes registered, four historic plates. Every year, the total registration for four bikes will be zero. But what I wanted to do today, I'm gonna put this away for now. I don't wanna get all resin on it. What I wanted to make was a backing plate for my historic plate. I want to protect that plate. I want it to be a little attractive. So what I have is some scrap pieces of 16th plywood that you can buy in any hobby shop. Very inexpensive. This is a little jar I've mixed up of West resin. You can use the, the slow hardener or the fast hardener. Now a couple of tricks about West resin. If you've never made and this is why this, this video may be useful to a lot of uh, my friends and partners in crime here or whatever you want to call us. What's good about this resin, of all the resins I've used, it's the easiest. They use it to, the re, it's not west, like northeast, south, and west. It, it's an acronym for putting fiberglass on wood bolts. That's how this resin was developed. Now, I put the hardener in. It's a five to one by weight or volume. It's not critical at all. It's not critical to temperature, shop conditions, anything, which makes it really nice if this is your first carbon fiber project or one of the first ones. Now, I hope that in the near future, people like Glenn and that, that enjoy working in the shop, this will allow them to make these kind of parts. Now, this is a relatively simple part. That's why I picked this for, for something of a demo, a, a more complex part it might, it might be just more difficult to do. I'm going to make two of them, one for the Suzuki and one for the, uh, the FZR, which now, of course, completes our a collection of four historic bikes. We have a bike from the 70s, from the 80s, and from the 90s. So what we need is a bike. I don't know what we need. Just need more bikes. <laughs> but don't tell Karen. Okay, so this resin, again, it's not toxic. Oh, let me just show this, too. See, a lot of times I get ahead of myself. I'm always ahead of myself here. This is a piece of ordinary glass you can buy in a hardware store. What this is, is when we get buy frames for Karen's oil paintings, they come with glass. I saved the glass, so I always have 20 pieces of this glass around from her paintings. The, I've covered it with saran wrap, ordinary saran wrap, glad wrap. And if you have, like when Midgley used to uh, do this kind of stuff, he'd have sheets of Teflon. For this, for this purpose, for this project, it will be unnecessary to have that. Anyway, I'm going to do two of them. I'll do one on camera, and I'll just do the other one with the time we have left over here. What I'm doing is putting plenty, plenty of resin on this. I want it to really soak. Now, what I have is a piece of the material that I'm going to use. And again, it's about a quarter of an inch bigger than the part itself. What I want to make sure, and I, I think anybody that's looking at this can kind of figure out, hey, that's not that difficult. Well, if you do this, first off, the nice thing about West Resin, it's really not toxic at all. You don't stink up the whole house. You don't wind up getting allergies to the stuff. Like some resins that are, the uh, the Huntsman Resin and Epons can, can, they're very dangerous to use. This is not. This you can, you feel kind of safe, and if you're experimenting with your first part, relatively easy. You go out on eBay and you buy a yard of cloth. Any kind of cloth, usually four ounce, six ounce. It can run anywhere from inexpensive brands to aircraft grade. That's, I'm just gonna make up a number, like $100 a yard. The inexpensive stuff that's usually got one bad thread in it or whatever and they're selling it out on eBay, it, that's a whole different animal. So you can get it probably for $30 a yard. Well, for your projects, it isn't going to matter. This is not going to be a structural part. Now I have a piece of this, what I'll call twill. Twill has that real nice look of carbon fiber that everybody seems to look. Everybody loves that look. And since the back piece of the FZR is made from this material, and I made it in a mold, and it wouldn't matter now if we had a mold. If you had a mold like that, a saucer from a plate it, it would just change the shape but the way you make it wouldn't change at all we're going to kind of lay this out now this this is the part you're going to see so i'd like to have well in an all perfect world i'd like to have this really look nice 
I'm gonna lay that out. And notice I have the, one of the tricks of doing this kind of work, I have the fiberglass or the carbon all cut up ahead of time because once you start working with this your hands turn into fly paper even if you're you know you're, you're highly skilled this stuff is like it turns into fly paper so my answer to that whole question is well just work faster and again I will just work along this really not difficult to do unless let me never mix more resin than you really need the reason for that is it's pretty simple. This resin will harden much quicker in mass, and when it hardens in mass, sometimes it can heat up, smoke. You can tell if it's doing that. Just grab the jar. If you feel it getting hot, better put it outside. It can do that. Tentatively can do that. Now, we also want to have, as one final thing here, I want to have what I call the cosmetic piece. Now, I've gone through the material you never want to have just one piece I want to have two pieces because there's little pinholes in here and if you look through and you put that over a part that's not black well you're gonna see the pinholes but now this will be the final cosmetic part of this this will lay on here now this will really be step one of making a plate bracket and this is the part we're gonna see I probably mixed a little more resin than I need, which means I better work pretty fast if I'm going to do two of these pieces. But there's no point in doing two of them. But what is really nice about West resin, West resin is not a structural resin. You wouldn't make an engine mount out of it or something that's going to hold tremendous strength. But it, it cosmetically, it sands out like butter. And it really is nice for making what I'll call non-structural parts, and that, which of course this is. It's going to hold a license plate. It'll be a little more attractive and a little more durable. Now, I noticed the plate that came off of the FZR, or will be coming off soon, really took a beating. It didn't have a protective piece, and every time a stone hits it or whatever. And also, I'm going to put gold bolts holding this license plate on, so I'm going to have a nice, a cosmetically nice look, I hope in the whole overall part. Now this will have to dry overnight, then I'll mark off with the license plate and some quarter inch tape, a quarter inch border, saw it off on a saw, sand it, put a nice finish on it, paint the back flat black. Luckily Glenn at one point in time, he bought a pint or so of this uh, flat black paint he was going to paint a helmet. We changed our mind. He changed his mind, I should say. And we still have that sitting somewhere. That flat black will be a nice, a nice look with this. Now I'm leaving plenty of resin on here because again, it sands off like butter. There's no reason to worry about it, even if you have a run or a drip or a drool or what. But if you didn't, the trick is, and it's, an, it's a nice trick too, by the way, you can take another piece of glass and another piece of this set it on top and put a weight on it. Now what that'll do is squeeze out all the extra resin. For a part like this, we don't really need to do that. It's not, it's not really necessary to do that, but while I'm, well, and I'm gonna kind of rush through this because what's happening, I know I've mixed more resin than I really need. Not gonna hurt anything. And you're not gonna see the back of this part. You obviously could do this without this piece of wood but the, what the wood does, it saves about a half a yard of carbon. And the, because West Re Resin is made to laminate composite to wood, it works out perfectly. And if you look back at the videos of the Yamaha seat that I made, uh, kind of gives you an idea of what's potentially possible. And again, I'm gonna make two of these. And then there's all kinds of things, and I've been, I've been looking at videos on YouTube of all different ways you can... First off, they make this stuff that Luciano calls toilet paper, that it looks like carbon fiber, but, well, there's something about it. It's, I'll give you an example. When you do linoleum that's supposed to look like wood, it never really looks like wood. I don't know why, it just doesn't. Or maybe I'm a bigot or something. Well, maybe, I definitely am a bigot, but, but anyway gives you some idea 
You want to spread, this is a flux brush, 29 cents and Harbor Freight. Soon as you're done with the resin, get it outside because it is going to self-cure. Could potentially catch fire at some point in the cure cycle. And it's from mixing it because all resin, once you, once you add the hardener, polyester resin is very different. You put one drop of polyester resin hardener in polyester resin in a 50 gallon drum and it eventually will harden. It'll take a thousand years, but it'll harden. It sets, it sets a different chemical reaction going. Epoxy, and it, this is a five to one mix. And there's no age limit to this, by the way. You can do this, here's what happens if you look at these cans. You can tell I've been doing this for a long time. These are probably 10 years old. You think it would have a shelf life, it doesn't. What happens is it starts turning brown. Doesn't hurt anything, because once you spread it out, you don't even see that. Unless you will make a cast part, I guess, or something. The other thing with this is, and this has already gone there, this is from, from doing this many, many years. What happens to it, it gets hard. It turns to jello, then it turns to what happens, it looks like it's a solid. Well, the way you get around that, and what I did today is just, just heat, just enough heat. A lot of people take the resin, they fill a sink with boiling water and just put the can in boiling water, that's real nice. It comes right back to being resin. It, turn, it uncrystallizes. The material always wants to turn to a crystal. As soon as you heat it, it goes back, and then the hardener lets it recrystallize. So tomorrow this will be a crystal again, which all epoxy is. And now as I'm looking at this, what has happened is I want to float some more on this. Maybe I'll put another layer on this one. The one on the Suzuki has a support, so I don't need to have 10 layers of carbon, but this might be nice just to get an extra layer on there while I'm playing around like this. Nice thing about making this, it, it was so cold out there this morning, and we're waiting to put the fuel pump in the bike. It obviously didn't come. It's coming from California. And thank you, Luciano, for the help yesterday. And boy, when this is dry, this is going to float out. It's just going to be super nice. Now, if you really want to be cute, if you really are in the mood to be, you can take old business cards, which of course we always have plenty of here. I'm just doing this for demo sake. It does not have to be done. And what this would be like if you were making a model airplane part, it would allow you to make the part a little bit lighter. In our case, not real important. This license plate thing is going to be an ounce or two heavier. It's not going to upset the center of gravity. This might make it a little nicer, make it easier to sand. And when I made those pieces, I made the one that's on the FZR that holds the tail light and the blinkers. I made a mold at one time. And then because I'm, uh, you know, the organized person I am, I looked for the mold the other day. I don't have the mold, I don't know. I have a feeling somebody, I won't mention any names, somebody borrowed it, never put it back in a box of molds, but that's okay. Because now I don't want to have two or three exactly the same, I want everyone to be a unique little entity, and so by making parts by hand, you don't run into that thing where you run up to Perkins and the pokey has your exact, not that it would really matter, but anyway. Looking to buy some carbon fiber, just look on eBay. For these kind of projects, you don't need to buy aircraft grade unless you're making something structural. If you're not making anything structural, West Resin is fine, not toxic, easy to use. And I think as a practice thing, when, when Glenn does his track bike, we'll find something on there that we can cover with carbon. I don't know what. And this is really, if somebody was sitting right here in a cellar, they'd be saying, wow, that's easy. Well, you know what? It isn't that difficult. And I'll put my elbow in the epoxy. But what really is nice, I think, is all the videos out on YouTube are helpful, in some way helpful, and allow you to do stuff. Now, you know what? You can always just go buy with these parts. You probably can go to Circle Cycle and buy them for 10 bucks, 15 bucks. If that is entertaining to you, that's fine. But what this allows me to do is make them any shape, any dimension, any, I don't know what else. 